Welcome to Refuge Reflections. In this podcast series, we will explore a variety of topics and shorter sermon series exclusive to Refuge Online Podcast. Our desire at Refuge is to provide you the resources to help you grow closer to Christ while equipping you to take the gospel with you everywhere you go. For more information, please visit us on the web at www.refugeph.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Refuge Reflections podcast. This is part of the Advocate series where we're teaching you how to advocate the case for Christ. To give you a little recap, in our last episode we talked about how God does not value what the world values. We are called to make a choice between seeking worldly treasures or heavenly treasures. These worldly treasures that provide temporary fulfillment and temporary satisfaction or we can choose heavenly treasures that provide eternal fulfillment, and ultimately these things work to make us more like Christ. God views this choice so seriously that the Bible describes friendship with the world as being in a state of enmity with God. Friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. I would challenge you to pause on this concept for just a moment and reflect on your life, reflect on all the choices that have been placed in front of you, and recognize that you as an individual have responsibility to choose godliness above all else in your pursuit of Christ. And building upon this, our core concept for this week is that God desires for us to take responsibility for all that he has given to us. And our core verse this week is going to come from Matthew chapter 25, verse 29. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away from him. We can break this verse down really simply to say, if you have more, God will give you more. If you do not have, God will take it all away from you. And we can stop and say, what in the world is the Bible teaching us here? Is this saying that God favors the rich and he hates the poor? Does God want to punish those who are desperate and in need? Absolutely not. And we're going to break down today and find out why that is. And if you haven't figured it out by now, my style for this podcast is to give you a core concept and a core verse and then open up the discussion and look at the scripture as a whole to reveal the entire truth hidden within it. So today we're going to read the parable of the talents from Matthew 25. I'm going to go ahead and read verses 14 through 30 in case you're listening to this while you drive or study or do whatever, and then we'll go back through and we'll reread it verse by verse and break it down. Starting in verse 14, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey. He called to his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, and to another he gave one talent, depending on each one's ability. Then he went on a journey. Immediately, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. In the same way, the man with two talents earned two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled his accounts with them. The man who had received five talents approached, presented five more talents, and said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I've earned five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in your master's joy. The man with two talents also approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've earned you two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in your master's joy. The man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you. You are a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. His master replied to him, You evil, lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers, and I would have at least received my money back with interest when I returned. So now take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents, for to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But to the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away from him. And throw this good-for-nothing servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right, so in this story, we have three servants. Each one is given money by their master according to their ability, according to their capability of managing that responsibility, right? 
But we see these three servants respond in different ways and receive very different rewards from their master. Really, this parable is more of a lesson in our ability to do the work that God has left for us. Going back to verse 14, it says that this master called his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. There is a responsibility when you're given something that belongs or was earned by somebody else here. These three servants have very differing levels of skill. So when their master is away, he entrusts them to take care of their possessions according to their abilities. One servant given five talents. So think of this as like five gold coins. One servant is given two gold coins, and one servant is given a single coin. How quickly do these servants go to work? Well, if you read the scripture, it's, it's immediately. In verse, at the end of verse 15, it says, Immediately the man who had received five talents put them to work and earned five more. In the same way, the man who had received two talents earned two more. But the man with a single talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. All three of them responded quickly to the calling of their master. This is a, an important point we have to understand. God does not want you to wait to do his work. This means that any of these excuses you have, like, I'm not qualified, I'm too busy, I'm still in school, I'm searching for my spouse, I'm waiting to have kids, whatever this excuse is that you're creating to push off God's calling in your life is invalid. You were created for good works that you might walk in them. With both the man who received five talents and the man who received two talents, they went to work and doubled it. They doubled their master's possessions. They stepped up to the responsibility and did as they were called. With the one servant who was given a single talent, he just went and hid it in the ground because he was afraid of failure. And because he was afraid, because fear controlled him, he was afraid of how his master would respond if he failed with his task, that he did absolutely nothing with it. He failed to step up to the responsibility. Verses 19 through 21 cover the servant who was given five talents. When the master returned and they're called to give account to what they did, the servant who had five talents presented five additional talents, and because of his faith, he was rewarded with joy. He proved to his master that he was willing to step up to the responsibility. Verses 22 and 23, we see the servant with two talents comes forward and presents two more. He doubled his master's money. Because he proved his faith, he was rewarded with joy by his master. But if we go to verse 24 here, let's read this one more time because the, the response from the master is much more harsher with the final servant, the one who did nothing with what he was given. It says, The man who had received one talent approached and said, Master, I know you. You're a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown, gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. So his master replies to him, You evil, lazy servant. This very harsh language, evil, lazy servant. If you have known that I reap where I haven't sown and I gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers and I would have received my money back with interest when I returned. This, this last servant here, we have to focus on this. The servant who was given a single talent was afraid and he decided to hide it in the ground and ignore his master's command, ignore the responsibility given to him by his master. And as a result, his master responds with this harsh language, evil, lazy servant. He could have done nothing just as easily. He, he wouldn't even have to dig a hole in the ground. He could have just taken it to the bank and the master would have earned his interest. Instead, he wasted the opportunity of growing what his master had given him. He wasted the opportunity and did nothing out of fear. So in verse 28, it says, We will take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But to the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away from him. And throw this good-for-nothing servant into the outer darkness where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is telling this parable to make a point that he will take the talent from the one who did nothing, the one who was unfaithful and unwilling to accept the responsibility given to him by the master. And he will give it to the faithful servant instead, and then he will have more than enough and continuously add to the master's possessions. More so, he will cast the unfaithful servant into the outer darkness, away from his master's protection. 
This is a great analogy for us as followers of Christ, and it serves to help us examine how we are living out our faith. Each of these servants are given a talent according to their ability. I love that the the word talent is used here because it's referring to like a monetary coin here, but but we could also call it like talents, like our abilities and the attributes that we have. We could say that God will only give you what you can handle. God will give you talents according to your abilities to handle the responsibility. This talent is an opportunity to spread the gospel. Sometimes God will give you more than you expect as a way of testing your faith, but it is not more than what you're capable of handling. If you take the opportunity of what God has given you and you do something with it, two things will happen. You will be proving your faith to Christ and you will be rewarded with joy. You will find joy in following Christ as a result of your faith because you will see, you'll see the work of God playing out in your life. And number two, you will add to God's kingdom by spreading the gospel. You're multiplying what the master has given you. Does God giving you two talents instead of five talents mean that you're worth any less? Absolutely not. God is going to give to you according to your ability. And both the faithful servants who were given five talents and one talents were given the reward of joy because they did as their master commanded to them. This is a great lesson that we should not compare our lives to the lives of someone else in what God is doing through them. We shouldn't look at at how we're serving God and then look at how someone else is serving God and say, well, you know, this other person is just, he's killing, he's doing so much better than me, that means I'm worthless. That's not what we see here. Both servants, given five talents and two talents, do exactly as what the, the master has commanded to them. There was no debate, there was no, let me see what you got, I'll show you what I got kind of situation here, but they both singularly were focused on what their master put in front of them and they doubled their master's possessions, and as a result, they received joy in their lives. We should never compare what God is doing in our life to what God is doing in someone else's life, because you'll never know the full story. But there's also a lesson here in this third servant, the one who was given a single talent and did nothing with it. How is the response? Well, the master comes to him and he says, you lazy, evil servant. I'm going to take this opportunity away from you and I'm going to give it to the person who is, who is stepping up to the plate, the person who is faithful in my word. And he will continue to do more and more for the kingdom of God as a result. But for you, because you did not show faith, you're not really my servant as all, at all and I'm going to cast you away from me. I'm going to cast you out of my protection. This is the difference between someone who is a true follower of Christ and someone who is just playing the part of a Christian. I would challenge you to look at your life and ask yourself, do you find joy in serving God? Do you find joy in handling the responsibility that your master has given to you? If the answer is no, you're probably the third servant. This is a serious implication because it might mean that you're not a follower of Jesus at all. If we're following our master's command, if we're stepping up to the responsibility that God has laid in front of us, we will find joy. This doesn't mean that your life will always be perfect and wonderful, and you'll be blessed with health, wealth, and prosperity. Those things aren't the goal here. The goal is finding joy, sharing in our master's joy. The reward here for not following Jesus, the reward here for not stepping up to the opportunity that the master has given to you is that you'll be cast from his presence, cast from his protection. It's a serious matter. It's a matter of your eternal soul. But I want to also leave you with encouragement here. Maybe you've been a follower of Jesus for a couple of months. Notice I didn't say Christian. Follower of Jesus. Maybe you've been a follower of Jesus for years. Depending on where you're at and your level of spiritual maturity, God is going to give you according to your abilities. This may mean you only have one talent right now. It may mean you have five talents right now. You might be somewhere in the middle, but do not be discouraged. All that God asks of you is to be faithful with what he has given to you. So work hard. Whatever opportunity God has laid in front of you, double it. If you have a single talent, make it two talents, and then double it again and make it four talents, and then double it again and make it eight talents, and we'll see the kingdom of God grow exponentially as a result, and our lives will be filled with joy.
And lastly, I want to give you a practical way you can help implement this mentality into your daily routine. Go home, find an Expo marker, even use a Sharpie if you want to. Find your mirror that you look at every single morning before you leave for work, before you go to school, and write these words down. Take responsibility for all that God has given to you. And I promise you, it will change your thought process. It will change the way you walk out of your house because this core concept will rest on your mind every single day. Thank you for listening to this message today brought to you by Refuge Church. Please visit our website for more resources as well as our YouTube channel. Just search for Refuge Church in Lenore City, Tennessee to find us. We hope that this message has helped you find hope in Jesus Christ.